Welcome to the Knowledge for Men show. Your life will never be the same. Your level of success will seldom exceed your level of personal development. I want to die empty of regret. I want to die empty of my best work. We don't understand who we are. Instead, we're living out somebody else's narrative. What one man can do, another man can do. If it's been done, it can be done again. Being yourself and being your truest, most authentic self in every moment. If it scares you or makes you a little afraid, do it. Follow your heart and your gut. The first stage. I think it's finding you, like finding out who I am today. Stuff will not work. You will have things that fail. Success is when you're a happy, fulfilled person. How do you define success? It's your life and you are the creator of the movie script that is your life story. Knowledge for Men is now doing live men's retreats in San Diego, California. Imagine three days of intense personal development training with 10 other like-minded men all pursuing greatness in life, business, and their relationships. You are not alone on this journey. Come to San Diego and experience The Awakening, a real cutthroat program designed to give you the tools you need to go from where you are now to where you want to be. There are only 10 spots and it's filling up quickly, so go to kfmretreat.com to learn more and apply for the program. Again, that's kfmretreat.com. All right, guys, welcome to the show. I'm here with Danny Flood, the author of Buy Your Own Island, The Ultimate Guide to Breaking Free and Making Your Dreams a Reality. So he's a world traveler and just want to give you guys a little idea of some of the things he's done here. He's crossed half of Southeast Asia on a motorcycle, rafted down the Amazon, ridden a bicycle across Mexico, swum with whale sharks in the Philippines, hitchhiked across Brazil, Malaysia, and Taiwan, and climbed the tallest mountains of South America. He's repelled off water falls in the jungle, ziplined above volcanoes, and sailed across the South China Sea. So, all right, I think we're in for quite a show here. Danny, how are you doing here today? Hey, Andrew, it's been a great pleasure to be on your show. I'm a big fan of your approach and the philosophy that you teach, all right. and thank you for that awesome introduction. Yeah, I mean, well, you, you did it all. I just read, uh, <laughs> reading it was actually easy. You, you're the one who took all the risks there, so... <laughs> All right, Danny, you know the drill. We kickstart off every show with some sort of saying, something that you've lived by. It could be something, a quote that you've read or something that you've actually written now that uh, you're an author here. So what do you got for us? And then kind of dive into how that kind of came to be and what it really means to you. Yeah, sure. So I have so many quotes that I I like to reference, but um, there was one by Eric Hoffer um, where he says that there are many who find a attractive alibi, um, that we find an alibi far more attractive than an achievement because an achievement doesn't settle anything permanently. You still have to prove that you were as good tomorrow as you were yesterday. Uh, but when you have a valid alibi for not achieving anything in life, you are, you are fixed, so to speak for life. Wow. And, um, well, yeah, what reason, is that? go ahead. What does that mean to you? Well, the reason, uh, <clears throat> I think for any of us, I mean, for yourself, Andrew, for, for me, based on what I've done, what you've done, uh, you did your 30-day rejection challenge, uh, to, or I'm sorry, challenge to kick fear in the face. And uh, I mean, all of the credit belongs to the person who's actually doing the deeds. And there's so many of us uh, men who we have the things we want, but we're held back for some reason. We feel like we're held back. We have an alibi or a secret excuse. Like, um, I, I I want, I deserve a great girl, but I don't make enough money or my car is too shitty or whatever, you know, and we have all these alibis that hold us back and, and it keeps us where we are. We don't make any progress. And the key to making progress is really to just, uh, I guess I say feel the fear and do it anyway, but, but have a pebble in your shoe and still go forward anyway. And you're going to make mistakes. You're going to have failures, but you're going to have a lot of successes too. And life, you're never really fixed in life. There's never a completion to anything. You're always moving forward. And, uh, you know, you achieve one thing, but then you want to make sure that what you do tomorrow is going to be bigger than what you just did. I like this. I, uh, I like the direction that we're going here. I think that kind of philosophy you just shared with us kind of goes into how you're able to take on such wild risks and go on adventures across the world. And, you know, I'm interested in the book that you, you wrote, you know, by your own Island, it's just such a, such an interesting title. It makes me want to dive in and just, you know, go through every page of the book here. So I'm going to take a step back here and I want to hear how you got started with all this. I, you know, I'm sure it wasn't always like this for you. So go ahead, take the mic and share your story with us. 
Well, Andrew, we actually met in person uh, several times. But we originally met, uh, what was it, four or five years ago, I think, at a workshop I did at uh, San Diego State. You were still a student at the time. And just look at how far both of us have come since then. And um, <clears throat> I, was, I was doing these workshops, and, and you had just started out with your knowledge from men's site. I think you paid a, a Craigslist designer to uh, put the site up for you, and you weren't really sure which direction you want to go. And look at all the things that you've done since then. Um, I, I've been fortunate to do a lot of things since then. And, um, you know, I did that workshop. How many people actually followed up with me after that? You were one of the few who actually followed up. Yeah, I remember. I'm actually like, think, this is like deja vu. This is, uh, this is actually pretty interesting. <laughs> it, yeah. Um, so I can say I knew, I knew you when, Andrew. <laughs> and uh, you, you knew me before I did all this stuff, you know. And, again, it just, it just takes... It just comes down to taking action, basically. Um, back when I was doing those workshops, I'd started my own business, and I was in the first couple of years, you know, working really hard. But I was still, I was still doing what other people told me I felt I should be doing. And whenever you're doing things that you feel you should be doing based on what other people are telling you, chances are there's something wrong. And for me, the the kind of the breakthrough came when I met a guy, Ryan Lum. Do you know Ryan? Yeah, th- uh, his name's uh, re- really familiar. Uh, he, s- he started a bucket listing group in San Diego called Ford Motion San Diego. And um, he also went to San Diego State. But uh, what happened was I, I t- contacted Ryan and I took this exercise from the four-hour work week called Dreamlining. And what Dreamlining forces you to do is it, asks, it forces you to ask questions of yourself. Um, you know, what do you really want to be? What do you want to do? What do you want to have? And I never really asked these questions of myself. I I was always going through the motions. Even though I was self-employed, I was still kind of spinning the wheels. Um, I was at the mercy of my clients, you know, to kind of dictate my life. Uh, I was chasing arbitrary income goals that had no meaning attached to them. I mean, I had all these papers all over my wall you know, with my goals and stuff, but, it, but they were other people's goals. I wasn't really being honest with myself. And so I got together with Ryan, and we got a, together a few friends, Mike Sherbakov and another guy, and um, we did this exercise. And the reason I, I got these guys together was because I wanted to keep us accountable because I didn't want to feel like, um, if, if I was just doing this on my own, I felt like I never would have done the exercise. I would never have taken it seriously. And so I wrote down uh, those goals that day, and um, that was before about two months before I left for South America on my first big backpacking trip. And ever since then, I've kind of just been, been figuring it out and learning uh, every step of the process. Wow. And, you know, that just really hit me when you, you had all these goals, but they weren't really resonating with you and, and they were somebody else's goals. I think that's a common thing that I think a lot of guys face is, is they have these goals and they don't even really know why they're going after them, but they just know that they should. Yeah, exactly. And one thing that's really great is travel, uh, long-term travel for giving you a different perspective. And I really like the uh, analogy that you made in the recent email that you sent about um, in tribal cultures, how they would do this separation from society. And what that does is um, if you're a man, if, if you're just kind of at home or, or you're where you've always been. I mean, they call us the boomerang generation. A lot of people are moving back in with at, in their parents. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. It stunts your growth. I mean, you really have to have that separation. You have to, and what's great about travel is it forces you into a different environment. And it forces you to learn about yourself, truly learn about yourself and listen to your heart because you're breaking free from that whole mold, that whole system where uh, you're spinning the wheels and you're just a cog in the system. And for me, what happened was I I went to Mexico for two months because I knew that this hamster wheel that I was on was not serving me and that I had to break free from it. So I think travel is a great thing. Whenever you can force yourself in a new environment, it forces you to um, adapt and uh, be resourceful and be creative. And um, another thing I I mentioned earlier uh, when I said I really like that email that you sent about the separation because... I really like metaphors as well. I think metaphors are a great way to condense information. And one of the concepts that you actually told me, because uh, you're in my book, by the way. Um, right. <laughs> well, thank, I, I really thank you. Like, <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. I really like the one you made with uh, jujitsu, for example. 
uh, where you know life is about um, <clears throat> well in jujitsu it's not always the strongest or the most aggressive person that wins. I mean it's right. always about right. you know and, and and about you know making mistakes and failing. But I really like those those metaphors because uh, they help you remember information easy. The idea of separation came from like you know for those listening it was like I had this email about we lack rite of passages today uh, for men. And and so separation was like, if you look at tribal cultures, that was like a key thing that happened in a lot of these tribal cultures is the, is the boy would be separated from the family and, and for an extended period of time. And in, in that process, he would be, he'd go on his own journey <laughs> and come back a man. And, you know, it's, it's just, it's different in other cultures, but I think we can kind of create our own rite of passages and, and it sounds like you've done something similar for yourself with this long-term extended travel. And I think traveling forces you to take responsibility for yourself. <laughs> when you're in a different country, it's like, you got to figure it out on your own. You're kind of, you're definitely standing on your own two feet. Yeah. And that's the takeaway is that, you know, putting yourself in this foreign environment, when you create the separation, um, it forces you to really come to know yourself. That's the big reward. You come to know yourself so well and and you discover things about yourself that you never even knew existed. Wow. Now, the easiest thing that would stop someone from doing this is money and time. It's like to kind of disrupting their life and then, oh, like, I don't have enough money to, to travel the world. So what kind of like life, you know, or like travel hacks would you recommend for these kind of guys? Well, I think if you're, if you're thinking of travel hacks or life hacks, um, you're kind of looking at the bullets, like the magic bullets, and kind of ignoring the core of the issue. Um, look at look at you, for example, Andrew. When you started Knowledge for Men, I mean, what did it look like? You had this basic WordPress website. Did it look? Was was your business anything like it is now today? No, is uh, I was actually on Joomla at the time. Okay, well, yeah, <laughs> I was on Joomla, and it was, it was ridiculous. A very basic website, you know. Um, and and the point is, I mean, it's you've obviously made a lot of progress in the last four years, but it's the same with travel. It's the same with personal development. I mean, you can't expect to be, um, you know, a Kung Fu master from day one. You have to start where you're at with the resources you have, and you have to find uh, a groove that works for you. So, for example, um, <clears throat> I'm a big fan of learning. I think learning is the common denominator here. And uh, I speak five languages pretty conversationally um, based on some of my travels. And what I've learned is that certain ways of learning just don't work for me. Uh, I, I've never learned very well in a classroom. Uh, I fall asleep in class, but if there's something I'm interested in, uh, I love to study on my own. And whenever I speak, whenever someone hears me speak in a language, they'll say, you know, where did you take classes? They assume that, you know, you have to take classes to learn a language. I say, I've never taken a class to learn Thai or Japanese. Um, I've talked to people and picked their brain, but I've never taken a class because um, it, the things a teacher teaches me, I'm not interested in, you know, but if, if I go to someone and say, hey, you know, you're really good at this language, uh, I'd like to learn a few things, I ask some questions that I'm interested in, I can learn really fast that way. And it really comes down to knowing what uh, the process that works for you, and you really have to uh, look inside you rather than going to uh, forums or classes and doing what other people, or magazines, and doing what other people tell you you should be doing. Uh, it, it sounds like you're kind of going on the term of like self-reliance and it's like kind of trusting yourself and looking inward instead of looking outward for what you, for what you, for what you want. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's a process of looking outward and inward. Um, and whenever you, you have like a breakthrough, I mean, take note of it, for example. Um, I'll give you a kind of a weird example. <laughs> uh, I've noticed that for myself, I am very productive whenever I'm commuting on a train or a bus or a plane. Maybe because it's, I'm forced to sit for, you know, a six-hour flight and I can't go anywhere. Uh, so, so what I actually did last week, I, I turned the uh, SkyTrain in Bangkok into my personal office, where I just kind of rode the, the train uh, seven, eight stops, and I was just you know, writing on my laptop, and then I wrote it back the other way. And uh, just for one hour of that, I was able to write over 2,000 words and completed this really uh, awesome post. And <clears throat> I, I guess it's interesting because I, was, I encountered this problem where 
I'm continually traveling. My environment keeps changing. I spend maybe a month in each place. Uh, but I never have like a reliable go-to place to work. And so every day I wake up and I'm, I'm saying, okay, where am I going to work? Am I going to work at Starbucks? Am I going to work at this cafe? Um, you know, am I going to go here? Am I going to go there? Uh, so whenever you encounter a problem like that, whenever you're running into this friction, it, there's, it's always an opportunity to discover something and to do things a better way. So whenever you have a problem in something in your life, you, you look at that like, there, okay, there has to be a great way to attack this problem so that I can turn this into an advantage, something that's going to get me ahead. Does that make sense, Andrew? Yeah, it sounds like you're basically looking at challenges and uh, looking for the opportunity and like having like a positive lens to the world around you. Yeah, exactly. And the reason I give that example is because, I mean, a lot of people might think it's kind of weird. I mean, I mean maybe I get a few looks when I'm, I'm on my laptop and I'm just sitting there and using the SkyTrain as my office. But that's another point is that you can't worry about looking weird. You know, uh, Tim Ferriss says, you know, go out in public and lay down on the ground. You've done your 30-day rejection challenge to kick fear in the face. I mean, you can't really worry about what other people think and let that influence your actions. Because if you do that, you're only living half a life. You're not really being a man. You're not being true to yourself. Mm. It, a, a part of your lifestyle and travel, it, it seems like you're saying you travel You're once a month, you're in a new place. So it sounds like you must have had to adopt some sort of level of minimalism with like your belongings and, and just, just picking up and moving to another place. I mean, for some people, that's actually just really scary. Can you talk about minimalism and, and how that's affected you? Well, it depends on minimalism in what sense, um, because we can have an abundance of one thing, but we can do without another thing. So when you say minimalism, I think you're, I think you're referring to the concept of possessions. Right. Um, but when you give away those possessions and you do something like travel, for example, um, I've created an abundance of relationships where I have friends in, you know, four dozen different countries all around the world and um, just packing up everything into a backpack and um, kind of leaving behind my life I've been able to create new lives and be able to create new social circles in different places and I've had an abundance of wealthy relationships that are infinitely more rewarding than uh, my flat screen TV back home or uh, you know <laughs> these other things because uh, <clears throat> I look at things like a television, for example, as an escape. It's an escape from the daily life. And by packing things up and traveling, I'm not escaping, I'm not running away from anything. I view it as I'm running to life. I'm running to a new and exciting life with infinite opportunities, infinite possibilities. And the way I've set up my business, um, it really doesn't matter where I am. I'm able to run it, whether I'm in uh, back home in San Diego or in Santiago, Chile. So I'm kind of relating this to your ability to like deal with risk. I mean, even just looking at your book, it's like you've imparted some wisdom from like the samurai into your philosophy of living of being okay with death. <laughs> I mean, that, this is what this is what is in the book, and and I, I've looked into this too, having um, read the Hakaguri. What are your thoughts on, on this, the seven virtues to hone the mind, and how does this kind of go into like your way of living? To some it would be scary, but for yourself it's like you seem to really enjoy it. Well, when you put, force yourself in a position where you have nothing to lose, uh, the only option is to advance um, in the direction you want to go. And I think that's a really powerful concept. Uh, I use the example of burning your ships in the book, uh, where Cortez, when he invaded Mexico, uh, his soldiers were squabbling amongst themselves. They wanted to go home. So he secretly burned all of his own ships so that there was no possible escape route. And I think that's a very, very powerful concept. Uh, Fyodor Dostoevsky, uh, he was fortunate enough to realize some success based on the, I'm sorry, some prosperity based on the success of his books in his lifetime. But whenever he, he became comfortable off his own success, he deliberately gambled away all of his possessions so that he would be forced to create another great book. And he'd be forced to create another great book or he would starve. And so I like to deliberately put myself in these situations where there is no possible backtracking, there is no possible retreat. 
And I don't think that you have to burn down your home to uh, put yourself <laughs> on this, this, kind of <laughs> this kind of ground. But I think there's other ways to do it. And, um, you know, one, one of, okay, so going back to travel, uh, one of the biggest risks, I suppose, travel risks I took, I went to Mexico and lived there for two months. And um, at the time, I felt like I still had a lot to lose. I, I felt like I had a lot of responsibilities that if I left, uh, things would fall apart without me. And um, I did this trip to Mexico kind of as an experiment. I thought, you know, if, even if things went wrong, I could always go back home. I could always drive back. And I was living with this lady uh, who hosted me. Her name was Maria. And she backpacked around the world. She backpacked around Europe. And she had no money. And she told me, Danny, you're a product of your culture. You're so focused on things that are so far away. Focus on the future. And I said, but, but Maria, I have so much to lose. I have all these things that depend on me. And she said, no, you don't. You have nothing to lose at all. <laughs> and so that, that lesson, you know, it, it, it kind of angered me at the time. But uh, I've kind of kept it with me a little bit. And I think it's, it's been very powerful. I, I think about that often whenever I, I feel like I'm nervous about something I'm doing. You know, how are people going to perceive it? Are they going to, am I going to fail? Are people going to, uh, am I going to embarrass myself? But, you know, just, just fucking do it anyway. Just, just do it. You have nothing to lose. And you really don't when you think about, you know, we're all headed to, we don't even know where we're all headed in the afterlife. So we're only here for a short time. There really is nothing to lose. And um, <clears throat> I think what's great, if, if you're traveling and you don't have a lot of money, I think it's even better because I've traveled with recurring income coming in. But what it, it, it forces you to become comfortable and live in a nice condo and you don't get out and meet people. What I like to do, when I did a, a bicycle trip, I did a, a two-week bicycle trip across Mexico uh, just over a year ago. I forced myself. I, I said, all right, I have $300. Um, I have more money in the bank, but I'm, I'm going to make it work just with this $300. And so it forced me to go places, and I was haggling with people. You know, I, I, I went to a resort, and, and I got to stay there for free because I negotiated with the innkeeper. Um, you know, saying, hey, you know, I don't want to spend, you know, $150 a night on this hotel. Is there anything else uh, I can work out with you? I'm willing to, to cook or so whatever. What, what, what happened? <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> well, I, I, he gave me, I, I got to stay in the, the staff room for free, basically. You know? and, and so the reason I like to say that example is because um, you know, we think that we have to have money to do everything. We have to have money first. But if you're able to, to put yourself in a situation where you have to be creative and uh, you have to find another way, I mean, you, you come up with other options and you learn new skills, new soft skills. Which is wow. So it forces you to be extremely creative and just like resourceful with what you have. Yeah, exactly. And it all, it all goes back to that, um, you know, back against the wall. Um, it's all kind of related in that yeah. sense. It, something you have in your book is like maximizing the value of time. Is this, you apply this with like your businesses or is this like applied into your life? Like how do you maximize the value of your time? Yeah, so again, it, and it comes back to uh, having an honest conversation with yourself. And um, there's, there's an exercise I'd like to say. It's called the productivity uh, chart, I, I suppose, where you have four categories. Uh, you have one is your, your high lifetime value activities. You have your high dollar per hour activities, low dollar per hour activities, and zero or negative activities. So this, this applies to business really well. It also applies to your personal life. Um, but again, it, it really comes down to being honest with yourself. When I was doing my, uh, my advertising business, my digital advertising business, I was spending a lot of time writing articles. And I was like, you know, I, I spent a whole day just to write one article for one of my clients' websites. I don't particularly enjoy this. It's a low dollar per hour activity. So I, I outsource that. So if there's something that's low dollar per hour, if you don't enjoy doing it, something you don't enjoy doing it, you either eliminate or you delegate. And so I found somebody who I could outsource to, um, $35, he wrote five articles, and my clients loved the work that he produced, he, he did better work than I could do anyways. So again, it comes down to um, having an honest conversation with yourself. If there's something that's causing a problem in your life, if, if it's causing friction, it's actually an opportunity, it's a chance to find another way to get information. In that case, I said, you know, I don't like doing this, it's taking up a lot of time. And then I found a better way to do it. I like that. I th yeah, I think it's like 
kind of like just taking responsibility for your life and like, all right, I can't, I shouldn't be doing this. Let me get someone who's better at this. And then I can do work that I actually enjoy. And uh, I think that's just, it's a combination of like taking responsibility and focusing on what you really want to do. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I'm not a fan of managing time in that sense, but rather asking, you know, questions about what, what should I really be doing with that time? You know, I don't, I don't spend, I don't really do a lot of like Pomodoro techniques where I, I work for 30 minutes or work right, stop right. for five minutes. Yeah. I think that's great. I think it's great to take a break, but I, I think it's more important to, um, to, to focus on the right things and, and do without certain things. You know, and, and I talk about, I might give another weird example, like Facebook, for example. I mean, Facebook can be a great asset, but it can also be an enormous waste of your time. So when I log into Facebook, I, I, I never log into my newsfeed anymore. I'll just go directly to the inbox and I can save a lot of time because I don't get distracted that way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, actually, so I mean, I just recently, there's this like Google Chrome app that, that blocks your newsfeed. It's called <laughs> Kill Your Newsfeed. And then I installed that on Google Chrome and I promise like I've saved like two hours a day because like I can't look at Facebook. All I can do is messages and Facebook groups. That's a huge, huge time saver. It's crazy how much time we spend on social media. Yeah, it's great. And like I said, it can be a great asset. I mean, Facebook is great for for messaging. It's great for uh, publishing, you know, uh, posting links to articles and podcasts that right, you might right. create. It's great, face, it's great for Facebook groups, but you have to use it the right way. And so it's not just what you're doing with it. It's also what you're not doing with it. Yeah, yeah. I think that's huge with time saving. It's like not so much what you do, but what you choose not to do as well. I think another key to to productivity is um, there's a book by Tony Schwartz. It's called um, how do I don't remember the, na- the name of the title, but it's it's basically uh, managing energy and not time is the key to maximum productivity. And as someone who's a traveler who's always on the go, I find that to be incredibly true. Um, you know, when when you when you work, you really want to make sure that you're kind of in the zone. Uh, that you're really plugged in and you're able to get so much more done when you're really in the zone in one hour than you would uh, four hours of, of, you know, not being there, you know, where you're kind of just all over the place. And so it really comes down to harnessing that energy and directing it into a productive uh, outlet. And that's, that's one reason, for example, why I did that experiment where I was working on the train. Um, because, you know, even, even having Wi-Fi on, even if I'm, I'm plugged into the Wi-Fi, I find it's really easy to get distracted. Yeah, absolutely. You know, your book, you know, By Your Own Island, it's almost 300 pages. Uh, how, how are you able to write this on the go? Like, what was this, like, while you're traveling? You know, it's like you're constantly moving around. Did you find that this was helpful for writing your book? Or, yeah, like, talk about just this writing process of this book. Yeah, so I originally started writing this book. I was in Vietnam, and I was at a small little cafe in Hanoi. Um, And Vietnam is great if you want to do writing or uh, even if you want to be a digital nomad and and start your own business because they have the best coffee in the world, uh, bar none. So you'll stay well caffeinated there. (laughs) Um, Better better than uh, Bulletproof Coffee? Or is that a joke? (laughs) I think it's the best, Andrew. It's it's so strong, and after I spent about three months in Vietnam, uh, I don't know if it's it's really hard for me to drink wow. any other kind so of coffee. So, can someone uh, in America get but, Vietnam coffee? Um, yeah, I think you can at a yeah. Vietnamese restaurant. Um, yeah, it has those little hats on it. Yeah, with okay. a little filter. And so, you know, I, I, Andrew, I guess what happened with me was I just completed this month and a half uh, motorbike trip across Vietnam, and I had this thrilling high. Um, you know, I was like, wow, I'm, I'm living the dream. I'm here. You know, and I knew that there was a book in me. I just didn't know if I was ready yet. Uh, but I, I, after experiencing that high, I came back to reality a little bit, and I realized, you know, whatever I do next, I want it to be bigger than this. And so I decided, you know, I really want to write a book. I, I really have a book in me based on all these experiences and everything I've learned. And um, after Vietnam, I went to Malaysia and I was hiking in Taman Negara. And uh, I had this horrible accident where I fell from this kind of rope bridge into this riverbed. Not a rope bridge, but it was like a, a, a wooden kind of bamboo bridge. 
And uh, I broke my foot, smashed up a bunch of teeth. And I was like, you know, I need to go back home. I need to get healthy again. Um, and so I went back home and I, I spent a lot of time just really meditating and um, spending a lot of time at the beach, you know, just, just kind of spending a lot of time with myself, like thinking about what I wanted to do next, thinking about this book. And then from that, from those sessions, from, those med- from that meditation, uh, all the pieces kind of started to fall into place. And um, I'd like to think that there's a better way to cultivate this than, you know, getting yourself almost beat to death, you know, breaking your feet and all <laughs> smashing up all your teeth. But <laughs> I, I think it's just, I, I was able to withdraw a little bit because during that trip I was traveling for six months and I was getting a little bit of travel fatigue. Um, and so, you know, I really just kind of stepped back. And um, I, I guess that's not really the answer you're looking for. Uh, maybe you're looking for more productivity standpoint. No, I think, that's, uh, um, I think that's really powerful. I think like being yeah. with yourself, I mean, because I think a, a challenge that I think a lot of us have is like, we don't make time for ourselves. It's like, we're always go, 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 you know, let's crush it. Let's, let's hit some goals. And I, I think sometimes just like reflecting back or just really like being with yourself or like you said, meditating is, is kind of liberating for like choosing the next direction that you want to go in. Yeah, exactly. Meditation is great. Um, travel is great. Even if um, it's just a weekend trip, if you feel that you're stuck in a routine. Um, I've actually been, I just launched my book. I'm here in Bangkok. I've been here for two months and I've been getting really burnt out with all the work. So I've been making trips, you know, every weekend. I've been going different parts of Thailand. And I find that's really helpful in, in rejuvenating me and, and keeping me focused. I can step back for a few days and get away from the computer uh, you know, and then come back with a fresh brain and, and kind of really just come back ready to crush it. Yeah. Like kind of after this whole process, um, of, of writing the book and now you're, now you're like really marketing the book and it's, it's doing well. Like, what would you say are some of the biggest lessons you've learned about yourself in, in writing this book? Writing a 300 plus page book. I mean, as a first time author, it was definitely a hard struggle. Think of an ant building an ant hill, you know, one grain of sand at a time. I really came a long way as a writer. Uh, many of the first attempts I made at writing, I looked up back at them and I was like, I can never use this. You know, I cringed at the quality. And uh, I made a lot of progress as a writer and that was really rewarding. And with the improvement in writing ability, it came an improvement in my cognitive abilities. I can organize my thoughts easier, I'm more perceptive. Um, I can able, I'm able to articulate my thoughts and express ideas better. Uh, another thing that was really exciting was when I released my baby out into the world. Um, you know, I worked for over a year just on the manuscript. So when I released it, it was like giving birth. You know, what would people think about it? Was it would it be deformed? Would they think it's ugly? Uh, would it come out with two heads instead of one? Uh, so there was no way to know for sure. But when I when I started getting like a dozen different positive comments. I think that was really exciting. That was very rewarding because, you know, I gave this book my best effort and, um, you know, it was really nice to know that, that people were really receiving it well. And, um, you know, this, like I said, I was a first time author. This, this book was a struggle. Um, even after finishing it, there was like a six month period before I was able to publish it because I had to go through all these different phases. Um, but I've learned so much and, um, come such a long way through writing this book and I think that you know in the beginning it was really hard it was really hard to to sit down and to start on this project because it was so big um, but there's this metaphor that I like to use that's called uh, escape velocity so you think of a rocket ship when it's about to take off uh, it expends about 90% of its energy just in the act of defying gravity and once it starts in the forward liftoff um, the effort become the motion becomes almost effortless, and so I think it's the same. Whenever you try to start on a new path in life, you're going to face all of this internal resistance, all of this pressure not to change, and it, it comes all the time. It can be very um, insidious, you know, this this internal resistance. But you have to realize, okay, that's just my uh, own internal resistance, and once I get through this, it's going to become easier and easier. And so another example is, um, you know, I mentioned I speak five languages pretty well, uh, English, Spanish, Thai, Chinese, and Japanese. An example is Chinese. Uh, When I first started to study Chinese, I felt like this was an insurmountable obstacle, and I I never got anywhere. Um, 
But then I, I kind of learned to find a process of learning and I found a way to make it easier to kind of dive into Chinese. And I was able to learn really quickly, you know, in, in just a month in Taiwan, uh, I was able to learn over 100 phrases and I was able to ask directions and have conversations with people and it became a lot easier. So I think that's, that's kind of the takeaway, I guess, is that, uh, you know, this, this writing this book has been the biggest project I've ever done. And in the beginning, there was all kinds of resistance. It was like, you know, uh, it seemed like an impossible task. Uh, but then, you know, once, once I got through that, once I developed my skill and I, I got into the habit of writing, it became easier yeah. and easier and easier. Yeah, I, I could only imagine. I mean, 300 pages, 300 pages is, uh, <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm going through the book here. It's, it's, you've really put in a ton of work and a ton of research. And I can see when someone's doing, I, I appreciate the hustle. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I appreciate the hustle because I can look through it and say, <laughs> like, all right, like, I know yeah. how long, like, this, something like this would, would take. And, and uh, I'm excited that you, you pushed through and persevered and, and made that happen. But like kind of just putting all this together, your travels, your journey, this being like an independent nomad, if you will. <laughs> um, like what's the, what's like the big benefit that you want people to walk away with? Um, like what, yeah, like what, what, what is the, you know, why should someone do this? Well, I think there's several takeaways that we, we mentioned um, in the interview, and one is it's refreshing as hell to live a life that's um, completely true to you without outside pressure and doing the things that you really want to do. I can take a break after this interview. It's 9 a.m. here. I can, I can go to my, the, the pool in my condo and go for a swim. You know, I can book a train ticket to or book a, a flight to the south of Thailand and and go island hopping today if I want to after this interview. <laughs> um, you know, while, while most people are, are in the office, you know, working away, um, I've been able to pack in so many different lives. If you, if you spend a year at home just, just working a nine to five, a whole year can pass by and you're like, okay, I don't remember anything from 2011. What happened in 2011? You don't remember any of it. When you break free from that and you go and you live a different lifestyle, I mean, you can remember so much, especially right. when you travel. And, you can really make huge progress in your life if you just discover the ways, um, the things that work the best for you, the best ways to learn, the best ways to grow, what really makes you truly happy, what's really authentic to you. You know, it's, it's February, um, a lot of us have made resolutions, a lot of us have probably quit our resolutions by now. Uh, because, you know, again, like we said earlier, resolutions fail because we just do what we think we should be doing. We look at fitness magazines and forums and go ask directions and have conversations with people, and it became a lot easier. So I think that's, that's kind of the takeaway, I guess, is that uh, you know, this, this writing this book has been the biggest project I've ever done. And in the beginning, there was all kinds of resistance. It was like, you know, uh, it seemed like an impossible task. Uh, but then you know, once, once I got through that, once I developed my skill and I, I got into the habit of writing, it became easier and easier and easier. Yeah. Yeah, I, I could only imagine. I mean, three hundred pages, three hundred pages is. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm going through the book here. It's, it's. You've really put in a ton of work and a ton of research, and I, you know, I, I, I can, I can see when someone's doing. I, I appreciate the hustle. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I appreciate yeah. the hustle because I can look through it and say, like, all right, like I know how long like this, something like this would would take, and and uh, I'm excited that you you pushed through and persevered and, and made that happen. But like kind of just putting all this together, like your travels, your journey, this uh, kind of like a traveling, like being like an independent nomad, if you will. <laughs> um, like what's the what's like the big benefit that you want people to walk away with? Like, what, um, yeah, like what, what what is the you know, why should someone do this? Well, I think there's several takeaways that we, we mentioned um, in the interview. And one is, um, you know, it's, it's refreshing as hell to live a life that's um, completely true to you without outside pressure and doing the things that you really want to do. Um, I can take a break after this interview. It's 9 a.m. here. I can, I can go to my, the, the pool in my condo and go for a swim. You know, I can book a train ticket to or book a, a flight to the south of Thailand and, 
and go island hopping today if I want to after this interview. <laughs> um, you know, while while most people are are in the office, you know, working away, <clears throat> um, I've been able to pack in so many different lives. If you if you spend a year at home just just working a nine to five, a whole year can pass by, and you're know, like, okay, I don't remember anything from 2011. What happened in 2011? You don't remember any of it, right? Um, but but when I when you when you break free from that and you go and you live a different lifestyle, I mean, you can remember so much, especially when you travel, and you can really make huge progress in your life if you just discover the ways, um, the things that work the best for you, the best ways to learn, the best ways to grow. What really makes you truly happy? What's really authentic to you? You know, it's it's February. Um, a lot of us have made resolutions. A lot of us have probably quit our resolutions by now. Uh, because, you know, again, like we said earlier, resolutions fail because we just do what we think we should be doing. We look at fitness magazines and forums and go, start going to the gym, but then we give up because we're not really interested in it. So, you know, you really need to step back. You need to have that separation and um, define what it is you want, make it specific and actionable, and then figure out the steps that you need to take to make it happen today, tomorrow, and the next day. And if you can, figure out how much money it's going to cost. And, you know, you can really get creative when it comes to money. I mean, you can work out barter, you can work out trades, you can meet someone who will shortcut things for you or hook you up with something. Um, but the key is just to define it and make it specific. And, and just take some small action today and tomorrow, even if it's just something small, and make sure you follow up on it. Just keep following up, and it's going to become easier and easier and easier. Yeah, I like that. That's beautiful. And Danny, let's now jump into the knowledge round. So I'll just ask you a few rapid fire questions here. So Danny, are you ready for the knowledge round? All right, I'm ready. Someday I'll go after my dreams. Someday I'll take action. Wouldn't the world be a better place if we were all inspired? If the world wasn't full of uninspiring people? We're all taught that life is tough. Life is hard. But the awful truth is that life is easy. It's pretty easy to live and do just enough. But truly living, chasing your dreams is hard. What are you dying to do? What is it that lights a fire in your heart? Don't wait till someday to answer this question. There is nothing more important than figuring that out. We're all dying, but if you're not chasing your dream, then you're already dead. Guys, Go to kfmretreat.com to apply for my retreat that will change everything. Go to kfmretreat.com to apply and be part of a program that will be a catalyst for redefining your life. Welcome to the Knowledge Round, where the guests will be asked rapid fire questions to give the audience invaluable pieces of wisdom to help transform their lives. Starting in three, two, one, showtime. <laughs> All right, first question I have here is what advice would you give to someone who's feeling kind of lost or unsure of what they should do next? Well, again, it, it just comes down to that, uh, that spiel that I just, I just made. <laughs> um, you know, you, you really have to just look inside and you have to figure it out for yourself. I mean, there's, there's really no way to shortcut it. Um, I think that every single person is different. So there's, there's no one size all fits all. Uh, everybody takes different paths in life. And I think whenever you compare yourself to other people, I think it's incredibly dangerous. Uh, you know, you, 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 it's easy to get stuck into this whole rat race and, um, you know, say, I want to be an entrepreneur because of this person. Or um, in the travel community, uh, there's, there's a whole competition about who's, who's the most traveled, you know, who's the most traveled person. Oh, I've been to 100 countries or I've been to 193 countries. If you want to know what to, to do next, just, just be honest with yourself. Find a group that works for you. Every person is going to be different. And don't compare yourself to other people. Compare yourself and be your best. Compare yourself to yourself and be better than your former self. Be your best self. So, uh, sorry, that's, that's a really vague yeah. answer. but <laughs> I think it's good in a way because some people can take it where they want. Um, next question I have for you is what was holding you back from becoming the man you are now today? Again, you know, what was holding me back was just doing all these things that I thought I should be doing. Um, and uh, another thing, I guess, would be fear uh, and having this, this alibi. You know, uh, it's, it's so easy to say, you know, if, if I could only have this, then everything would be perfect. Um, if I just had this girl or if I just had uh, my product complete, you know, if my, my prototype's complete, um, 
just 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 stop having this alibi you know just just focus on the present and just just do what you have to do i guess all right i like that living uh in the now some uh eckhart toll if you will <laughs> Yeah. Um, all right. And this is, this is about books. So like, what are your three most influential books? Maybe just two, uh, if you can't think of three, but just three of your most influential books and, uh, just briefly explain why. Well, Andrew, I have a bunch of books that I can recommend. Um, I, I learned uh, speed reading a few years ago and I, I just went through one book after another. I think any book by Dan Kennedy is great. He's got his no BS, uh, marketing series really taught me a lot about uh, business and, and marketing. Um, anything by Brian Tracy. Uh, one, one book I really like in particular is The Art of Closing the Sale. And I think it's great because for entrepreneurs because um, obviously cash flow is the lifeblood of a business and a lot of entrepreneurs are a little bit timid when it comes to the close, to closing the sale. Uh, there's a lot of bloggers out there, travel bloggers who've been writing for four years but they haven't monetized their blogs. So I think that that's a great book because it's, um, and it's, it's, it applies to life as well. I mean, in life, you're not going to get anything unless you ask for it. You know, you have to ask for that number, for her number. You have to ask for the close. Um, and so that, that book kind of really instills that mindset in you and it gives you a lot of uh, techniques that you can apply. So, yeah, no, that, that's a huge point uh, you know, about monetizing. I think that's like a, some people are even myself uh, in many ways just, are just scared to to monetize and it's like when is the right time and uh and and when you do it you feel like you're doing something wrong or you're hurting your brand and uh <laughs> I, I think that's a i think that's a, a major sticking point with probably anyone stepping into monetizing some sort of talent or skill or passion that they have absolutely and and it starts in the mind it's you know it's it's completely mental that's the first step and I think that's definitely the biggest roadblock um, that stops people from from being a successful self-employed person. And then they have to scramble back to the nine to five because they, they can't figure out how to actually earn money doing what they're doing. Uh, many people can promote and market themselves well, but then they become timid when it comes time to ask for the money. So again, it's really mental and you have to overcome that fear of closing and asking for money. Like we feel like it's, it's slimy, like there's something wrong with it. But no, it's, it's, it's what you're supposed to do. It's business as usual. Yeah. Yeah. Very powerful. I know the, Dan, I know the Dan Kennedy, uh, no BS series and Brian Tracy books are, uh, they're all really good. So any listeners want to pick up one of these in audiobook format, you can go to kfmbook.com for free audible credit. And Danny, the next question I have for you is more of a scenario. This is kind of, you know, maybe it summarizes some of your stuff, uh, you know, maybe it doesn't, but what would you tell your your 20 year old self? if you had 60 seconds with your 20 year old self, like what would you tell him to do? And, uh, you know, what'd you tell him not to do? If I were to go back and talk to my, uh, 23 year old self, well, I'd say re read this book. First of all, <laughs> read by your own Island because <laughs> I, I wrote that book as a, um, it's kind of what I would have wanted to know, uh, in the past. It's, it's a guide that I wish I had when I was coming out of college and forced to figure my life out in the middle of a recession where there seemed to be no opportunities. Uh, but if, if I were to go back and just speak to myself in 60 seconds, I would say, stop comparing yourself to other people. Be true to yourself. And I think when you're comparing yourself to other people, I think that it was constantly making me unhappy. Uh, because, you know, especially in the US and America, we feel so much social pressure, so much conditioning. Um, you know, if you go to the pickup artist community, for example, uh, if you're not like indoctrinated in this community, they call you a, a chump. You know, they say you're an these, these people are average frustrated chumps. You know, <laughs> and so like we're 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 constantly comparing each other to everyone else, and we kind of develop this. It's I don't know, Andrew. It's it's a really strange thing where we feel like we're superior to other people, but at the same time we're also limiting ourselves because we we feel that we're superior and we feel everyone else is stupid. Um, and that we feel like we should be doing better. And what, what we're really doing is we're really holding ourselves back because we're not being humble and we're not absorbing what other people can teach us. Um, and so when it comes to comparing yourself to other people, just to stop doing it. If you're an entrepreneur, uh, you know, I'm not the best entrepreneur in the world. I'm not, I'm not Mark Zuckerberg. You know, if, if I was striving to try to be Mark Zuckerberg, I would constantly be unhappy. But I found a way that works for me. 
I found a way to work 10 hours a week, but make more money than I know than I need. And um, I've been able to travel and do all the things I really want to do. So, you know, I'm, I'm not the most traveled person in the world. I'm not the greatest entrepreneur in the world, but I've found a groove that works for me. And if you're listening to this, you know, find something that works for you. Don't feel that you have to have the pressure to, to make a million dollar a year business or a $10 million a year business or even a you know, $100,000 a year business. I mean, if you can find something and you can be happy and make a living, then, then that's, that's perfect. You're, you're on the right path. Yeah, I, I think what you said is just so critical for so many men to hear. I, I think we are like masters. We all have master's degrees in comparison of other people. And I, I think, you know, social media, you know, plays a role with that. I think, you know, the media on television plays a role with that and just and just our daily lives. And ju- just just like I, that's a, what a lot of social conversation is, is like, oh, this happened to who this person just got this, just got this new car, just got this house like. And I think it really kind of drowns us and, and prevents us from really reaching our, our, our own full potential because we're going after somebody else's. Exactly. And we, we see these articles online, you know, of some entrepreneur who did something amazing or some other person did something amazing. And um, I, I really don't like the way that the media um, portrays these, these people um, for a lot of ways. I had this maybe a conversation for another time, but... I mean, we all see like the, you know, the, the smashing success, but we don't see all of the hard work and all of the failure that had to happen in order to make that success possible. And the way that these media people tend to write these articles, they, they act like it's, it's completely ordinary. You know, it's ordinary for this entrepreneur to sell their startup for $100 million. But the, these reporters, when they report these articles, they haven't done this stuff themselves. And so they, they kind of make it seem like it's, it's ordinary to be, you know, ridiculously gifted and ridiculously successful. And then you read these articles and, and you, you read the comments and everyone's like, oh, yeah, 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 blah, 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 no big deal. And it's like, well, damn, you know, there must be something wrong with me. And I'm trying to say that there's, there's nothing wrong with you. If there's something you really want, go after it. But you've got to realize that's going to take a ton of hard work and you're going to make a lot of missteps along the way. But if, if you're willing to put in the work and just keep going, you can get it. Yeah. I think that's great. I think that's great. I think we'll, uh, we'll just, that'll conclude the knowledge around there. So like what's you're, you're, you're doing a lot of marketing you're, you're promoting the book. It's off to a great start here. Uh, a few weeks in, are you going to stay in Bangkok? Are you, are you, uh, yeah, like just what's going on next? Well, Andrew, I'm guess I'm just enjoying the freedom that I've created. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have a bunch of goals, uh, you know, business and personal goals, and uh, I'm making sure that they're bigger than anything I've done before. Um, and I think that's that's the next step. I, I keep learning, Andrew. I keep learning from everything that I do, everything that I try, whether it's a success or a failure. I learn something new, and I can apply it to to take things to the next level. I've learned so much through my travels about how to travel and um, so many, like, little travel hacks so many things about myself that I never would have known. I've learned so much about business and how to reach people and how to um, reach customers and market myself. And I'm just looking forward to applying these, these lessons to what I'm doing next. Yeah. Yeah. So just kind of enjoying the journey of life, <laughs> which is awesome. Yeah, man. And, uh, and, and looking forward to, to the, to the big goals that you have and uh, what you do. Um, all right. So go ahead and give yourself a plug on how my audience can follow up with you. Obviously guys, I'll plug the book here. It's by, it's, it's by your own Island. Just, just go to Google. Uh, Danny flood is the author and, uh, you'll see it there, right? When you type it into Google, it's on Amazon currently. So check that out in Kindle and paperback edition. So Danny, do you have a, a personal blog for yourself? Yeah, I have a blog. It's openworldmag.com. And uh, it's Open World Magazine. It's all about um, techniques and, I guess, hacks for designing your life, for optimizing your life and making growth and uh, pursuing your passion. We have a podcast on there as well where I interview you know, people around the world doing extraordinary things and, and kind of asking them about their own journey. Um, there's also buyyourownisland.com, and you can also download the audiobook for free. We can put a link to that. Or you can just go to this URL. It's buyyourownisland.com forward slash audio dash book and you can listen to the audiobook for free there's also the uh, Amazon book uh, for Kindle 
It's nine ninety nine. Just to search for buy your own islands. All right, there it is. Danny, thank you so much for sharing your story and some really great life lessons here with my community. So I thank you for your time. Thank you, Andrew. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for listening to the Knowledge From In podcast. Hundreds of interviews and a million downloads later, we're continuing to build an international movement and we've just started. So if you enjoyed this episode, go ahead and leave a review in iTunes. It really helps to grow the podcast. Guys, 2015 is the official year of living with purpose, where every day you do only the things that matter to you. You wake up, live with purpose, and take massive action towards the life you want. Check out kfmfree.com to get free tools I've created to help you crush life. Again, that's kfmfree.com. This is your host, Andrew Fairby, and I'll see you in the next episode.